Hi everybody, this is Erin Anding, your School Librarian and Site Technology Facilitator. And this is a quick little presentation about a couple of technology and library updates that you need to be aware of from both the school level and from the district level. So one of the things from the district is um, we have now been given access, as some of you, we tried it a year or two ago and you really, really enjoyed it. But once again, the East Baton Rouge Parish School System has been given a complete access trial to Flocabulary. So if you've never done Flocabulary, Flocabulary uses hip hop music to teach key concepts to our students. And several of our teachers who used it during our last trial really, really enjoyed it. Um, our district is now using Flocabulary again, and we will have total access through March 31st. I am not aware, um, I'll be honest, if this is going to be like last time where this trial ends, you know, based on participations, whether or not we'll buy. But I can say that um, enjoy it while you can and let's use it and we'll cross our fingers. Uh, it does use, you know, Google Single Sign-On. For those of you who have students who might need um, uh, text-to-speech or read aloud, in previous um, newsletters, things of that nature, I've uh, given you information about several extensions, several apps that the district has bought into that might be able to be good for um, you know, read aloud situations. Remember, um, we also have many of our uh, resources already have that. For example, our Gale databases are um, already equipped for that situation. But the big program that our district buys into is Kurzweil 3000. And Kurzweil now has um, a single sign-on option. I am uh, in my next newsletter, I'll put in a, um, a PDF about getting rolling with Kurzweil, if that's one that you would like to be interested in, you're not as familiar with it. But no matter what, there is now a single sign-on. Uh, this one has been mentioned before in newsletters and things of that nature, but with the beginning of the new semester, I want to remind, it of, uh, remind you. Uh, the district has put out a Google form for you to celebrate your Google certification status at the district level. So if that is something that you are working on or you have just completed, we need to get you that um, uh, Google form link so that you can let the district know. The district is doing, they did it last year, they're doing it again. They are doing um, you know, a little competition between schools and stuff for uh, Google certification. That would be at the end of the year. They also do have a new form. I have mentioned it in previous newsletters, but uh, if you didn't see it, if you are um, someone who is already certified, but maybe you're coming from another school, they want that to be accurately represented as to you are now technically a Google person at Glen Oaks Magnet High School. And um, we need to get your status transferred with a different Google form. Okay, I will put that in my next newsletter as well. Or you can come speak with me. If you need um, information about perhaps taking the test, I am a, a Google certified trainer, so I can give you some information and point you in the right direction. So that perhaps you'll be filling out these forms, maybe not now, but later on in the semester. Uh, that's kind of it for technology for the moment, but we are also um, in library. There is a big new announcement for all libraries across the district. Uh, if you realize last semester, I was total ebook audiobooks using Maccabea uh, due to the pandemic. We didn't circulate books unless there was a very, very, very specific reason, and that was only done once or twice. But um, the district has now authorized me to move to what librarians call closed stack circulation. And in this situation, I can now do books for students, but the, you know, them coming in and picking up books and kind of browsing, putting them back, things of that nature currently cannot happen. So I'll explain in a second, but please, this is the, this is a brand new book. So this is the type of stuff that they can get. And please notice here, if I did things correctly, and I'm sure I missed somebody, I, and, um, Ms. Williams, my city year, uh, worker. I'm sure we missed somewhere, so please let us know. But hopefully all of you were invited, both faculty and students, to either the high school or the middle school library Google Classroom. Okay, and this will now house a lot of our resources, but it will also house a very important Google form. So how will we circulate books? Starting this week, 
Physical books will be distributed on Tuesdays and Fridays during first and third periods. Um, most likely, that'll be city year, but it might be me. I'll explain further in a second. There is a Google form in the Google Classrooms. It's the very first thing that can be seen. And if it is filled out by a faculty or a student by 12.30 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays, we will pull the books and we will check them out and distribute them on Tuesday and Friday. Requests made after 12.30 p.m. will be distributed on the following distribution day. Okay. Um, like I said, it'll either be done by me or one of two city year representatives who are being trained. Uh, most likely it'll be city year during first period. I am now teaching um, world geography until Miss uh, Nelson returns. So I might be able to help during third, but definitely during first, it'll be city year who comes to your door to deliver the books. And students and faculty members will return books to their respective bins in the library when they are finished with them. The books will then be quarantined for three days. The high school bin will be on the double doors of the e-building hallway and the middle school, the bins will be placed inside the double doors on the quad side of the library. That's the middle school entrance and the high school entrance. The students should only be going through those entrances to maintain separation. At this time, because we have to quarantine books for three days before putting them back on the shelves and redistributing them, we are going to check out one physical book per person at a time. Uh, any faculty member or student who would like to have more, which is perfectly fine, are highly encouraged to use Mac and Via, which is our ebook and audiobook platform. We have over 11,000, I think, books, ebooks and audiobooks between what I own and what is owned at the district level. So one physical book and um, Mac and Via, of course. And if you could promote this to your students, there's a video about how to use the catalog to figure out what books the library has. If you could promote this with the students, um, that would be great because they're interested, but they just need to see it happen to get an idea of what's going on. But we do already have several kids who have requested books for Friday. Uh, just a reminder about Chromebooks and chargers, since we're talking about distribution, teachers have access to all student use and passwords 24 seven through a system called Stubbs. So if you have not bookmarked this somewhere for you, this is Stubbs. Use your username and password. You'll have every username and password for the students on this campus. If they are not in Stubbs, then they don't have one yet that's been transferred to or created to Glen Oaks Magnet High School. I will continue to download to the teacher share drive, but where I'm downloading from is Stubbs. So you have access to that. Um, I will handle all Chromebooks and chargers that are broken, stolen, truly lost, and those for new students, okay? Uh, but remember, school policy is that you have a plan in place for when a student just needs a temporary Chromebook and or a charger. So a student who forgets theirs at home or it's fourth period and the charger um, is having an issue or, you know, they need to charge, that is a classroom management situation. Uh, I and the library staff is happy to check out Chromebooks, chargers and or buckets to teachers who are interested. But um, you know, if you send a student to get a charger just because they forgot one at home and I'm not actually charging it to the student, it's going to be put onto the teacher account. And then it would be expected to stay in the teacher's room for the next student. Um, this is both to cut down on the number of students and the line out the door there would be every day, and also to um, keep things off their accounts. Every Chromebook is worth $200. So if they get a temp Chromebook, they now have $400 on their account. So we would prefer to only do that when, you know, something is truly lost, stolen, broken. Okay. Please send them with notes or hero, you know, notes when you send them. If you need to stay up to date, there are many ways the library is handing out information in today's world. So please, you know, the library Google Classroom, Make sure you're a member. If uh, you're not, please let me know and I will add you. The library website, we are a full website on the school website and it's kept up to date with resources for both the students and for the faculty members. I do have a YouTube channel. If you'd like to subscribe, it's under Aaron Anding. You'll see my picture. And that's where I put all my videos and you know tech tutorials and things of that nature. I do have a newsletter that goes out um, to the faculty. It's called Panther Pages. And um, about once a month, occasionally every once in a 
month and a half, but about once a month, you'll have a professional newsletter come through your email. And of course, places like Clever, um, if you did not know, Clever has um, a section where it's just library resources. And of course, a lot of the tools that, um, you know, tech tools we use are in Clever. If you ever have an issue with Clever, I am the school administrator for Clever. If you have any other questions, please come see me. I'll be in the library. Uh, and I can't wait to see you and help you. Thank you so much.